Welcome back to Arise and Shine. The world truly is a global village, and the one holiday that seems to unite us the most is Christmas. Christmas is celebrated in over 160 countries across the world. So you know what that means, more places to shop for gifts. Here to take us on a tour of Christmas markets around the world is our good friend, Jeff Greif from TravelSquire.com. Jeff, is Christmas celebrated in the same traditional way as we do in America in other countries around the world? Well, yeah, sure. There's, there's Santa Claus, and they call <laughs> him by Le Père Noël in France. Ah. And, but the, the, the celebration's the same. It's uh, probably a little less commercial, but mm -hmm. it's just the same. Yeah, it's so beautiful to see all these pictures of the Christmas market, so let's get to it. Okay. Um, first up is German-influenced French region of Alsace. Well, there, uh, France has a lot of uh, Christmas markets, but mm -hmm. the two, two of the, the special ones are Strasbourg, which is the oldest Christmas market in France. Okay. Um, and it's a lot of uh, stalls and, you know, uh, uh, French cuisine mm -hmm. and all kinds of things that are, are very French in nature. Right. So, um, it's, and it's quite big. Amazing. And then there's the Chris Kindle market in Germany, which it seems like those Germans really have the Christmas market thing down. I know I went to one in Chicago and it was amazing. I love it. Yeah, there, Germany has it down. There are over 300 markets in, in, in Germany and it's, it was hard to pick out one. Right. But the Chris Kindle one is really interesting because it opens up with an angel uh -huh. and the angel welcomes everybody to Aww. Christmas. And it starts actually uh, in November and it goes until the end of December. So it doesn't oh, really wow. even go to the epiphany. Mm -hmm. Uh, everything is original. There's nothing from China. There's a community oh. that uh, forbids bringing kitchen and, uh -huh. and anything that's not made in Germany. Oh, so that's nice. It's, so it's all authentic. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have all the authentic food, like the worst oh, and, right. and everything that 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 that, that, that is very Germans famous love. in Germans. Right. Yeah. yeah, and they're supporting local artisans and things like that. That's great. Um, what about we have Prague in the Czech Republic? Prague is such a beautiful city, and I know they celebrate Christmas. To, to the nines. <laughs> they do. And, uh, you know, there are Christmas markets all over the Czech Republic. But the one in Prague is really special because they have the the, Chris, the clock that's in Wenceslas Square. Okay. And um, it, it plays, um, it goes off during the market, which is really special. And mm -hmm. they have an amazing Christmas tree with all kinds of lights decorated in the middle of the square. And then they have all these stalls that are not only serving, you know, the traditional market food, but uh, traditional Czech food as well. So it, it's really a tradition, it's a fun spin on it. And because the Czech Republic is the land of beer, Pilsen, which <laughs> it comes oh. from the Czech Republic, right. not only do they serve the wines that mm -hmm. they do with the other markets, but they also serve beer, a lot of beer there. Right. I think anyone who goes to a Christmas market, you get those nice warm wines, right? It's which called, is always fun. Yeah, it's called glue wine in, uh -huh. in Germany, and it's mulled, basically it's mulled wine. Right. But the Czech Republic, uh, because Pilsner or Kell comes from there, mm -hmm. and they make a lot of beer, the first beer was made there, um, beer is pretty much a part of the whole thing. Oh yeah, it's yeah. part of the culture, and I think that's what's so cool about all these different markets. They try to incorporate uh, traditions from their own country in the Christmas market. And I think another important thing to note is that it's not just wine and alcohol. These these Christmas markets can be kid-friendly, too. They can be family-friendly, right? Well, yes, definitely. They're all family-friendly. Um, and, you know, it, it's a it, you, you can see a lot of kids. Uh, mm -hmm. They have, of course, they all have um, parades with Santa Claus mm -hmm. in them. And then they also bring in, you know, uh, mystical th characters. And, right. and the kids love it. So. Yeah, and just the lights. Kids always love looking at the lights. And I read about some Christmas markets that have some some of those trains the steam trains that you can ride on that's true in Germany yeah. and yeah and it's and then they also have wooden figurines that are on um, you know that are on platforms that spin and then right. they have carousels and even the next market that we're going to talk about in Holland uh -huh. is it's the Valkenburg uh, Christmas market in Holland mm -hmm. and that is under the ruins of a, an old cathedral oh, wow. and it's in caves underground oh my goodness and then when you go underground they there's actually a Santa's village there. Oh, wow. So you can meet Mr. and Mrs. Claus and take your picture with them. The <laughs> kids love that. Yeah. So, and then, then you have these wooden stands that are built right into the caves, which, which are really awesome. Amazing. Yeah, I think that's one of the best parts for Christmas. I remember as a kid, my parents just driving me around to look at all the Christmas lights and the Christmas tree lightings and going to those different fairs to see all your favorite characters. Um, 
But what is also interesting is that it's not just Christmas markets in Europe, um, but there's one in Japan too. Is that right? Yes. So Japan does a German Christmas market, oh, which is course, kind of funny. Of course, that makes so much sense. But you know, you know, as Japan does everything, it's like Germany on steroids. So, <laughs> so it's really kind of uh, above and beyond what you would think. So mm -hmm. it, it's um, in um, Dori Park um, in Sapporo, which is the North Island uh, of Japan. Mm -hmm. So it's super cold. There's always snow. Oh, cool. And the park is the stalls are all put in the park, and they actually have uh, crafts from even Russia, Russia, Germany, oh, um, and, and Eastern Europe, and they sell sell all kinds of interesting things. And then they bring the mulled wine, of course, over, mm -hmm. and and the German food mixed with you know teriyaki or tempura, or whatever you would get. So <laughs> have to have the Japanese spin, right? Exactly. And then there's this amazing. Christmas tree that's all lights. No tree, lights. What? So oh, man. they suspend it with um, uh, to the top and they pull the lights down uh -huh. and it's all white lights so it illuminates everything oh, and, and reflects off the snow. It's awesome. Yeah, that's so, I feel like Japanese, they love to take it to the next level, don't they? Exactly. And they're probably drinking some sake too. Right. <laughs> Come on. And so now we're off to South Africa. Tell us about what's there. Well, South Africa is, is really a new market and um, it it just started um, a few years ago, and it's based on the same theme, but it, it's really indigenous to South Africa because the market sells crafts and things that you can only find in South Africa. Nice. Um, and it's you know it's it it started really um, to to help a charity. Yeah, and so talk about that. Is there a way to? get our shop on and also give back at the same time? Because I think sometimes Christmas, you know, it, it should be about that giving spirit, right? Right, absolutely. So so the nickel market in South Africa was started for this charity called Kung Winnie. Okay. And basically it helps um, unemployed adults and children with disability and people who don't have homes. And anything that's bought at this nickel market is really goes towards the charity. Okay. And so what they did was they extended that and they created a website, of course. Mm -hmm. And that on that website, you can buy the things, the crafts that are sold at the market and have them shipped to you. And all of that money goes to this charity. So awesome. it's really amazing. amazing. And what about the Good Shepherd Learning Academy in Cameroon? That's also one of the places that they're giving back to. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so there's a website for Good Shepherd, mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty amazing. It's it's think of it like a bridal registry uh -huh. for people who don't have. So oh, wow. um, you know you can buy a desk, you can buy a chair, you can buy um, school books for a child. So you can buy anything that these children in Cameroon need, mm -hmm. and basically you buy it off the site, and and it, and that gets purchased on behalf of you. And, oh, wow. and, and so the charity actually is not going to kind of an organization. It's actually doing some exact good. And finally, we have the Nanuki Spinners and Weavers. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, that's in Kenya, mm -hmm. and it's it's really interesting. It's it's really like a workshop in the middle of Kenya, and um, these these people are these 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 women. It's mostly women. They're weavers, and they actually produce rugs and all kinds of um, we woven stuff, blankets, sarongs, um, and and all of the work is done on premises, and all the the dyeing is done with in insects and, and vegetables, so um, everything is done for the good, and they have a website um, where you can actually buy these, these products that they make. Amazing. I think it's so important to have fun and go to the Christmas markets, but then also to remember that charity spirit as well. Well, thanks so much, Jeff. I'm jet-lagged already. <laughs> for more on international travel and great destinations, head on over to TravelSquire.com. And coming up, macaron, manscaping, and magicians. Stay right there for more Rise and Shine. Thank you.